Welcome internet to a psychologist's casual view. And today I wanted to review Love, Hate and Reparation by both Melanie Klein and Joanne Rivière. So I'm saying that in the French way because it's kind of a reflex because that's how I was taught. So that's why I'm saying it in the French way. So this book is comprised of two articles. Um, one written by Joanne Rivière focused on aggressivity, on greed and on hate. And another one by Melanie Klein which is the second one chronologically in the book and it's focused on guilt, uh, love and reparation and basically uh, the two articles um, are completely complementary. Um, I hesitated to do each article differently but reading the whole book you kind of get a nice um, complementarity of both articles so I decided to review them as one even though they're written by two different people. Also, um, you sh it should be noted that basically um, this is a nice and I feel very good introduction to Kleinian Fairy. Like if you've never read Melanie Klein, a good book to start with, I think, because it really kind of puts the, um, the focus on her main core ideas. So basically, what is this book about? It's about the two fundamental tendencies of the human mind, to love and to hate. And for Manny Klein and Joanne Rivière, this is going to go back, all those feelings, all those emotions, go back to the first moments of life. Meaning, as soon as the infant comes into the world, he's faced with so many emotions that they overwhelm him both positive and negative, that overwhelmness is going to translate into a mental life. Basically, all the experiences, everything that he lives, is going to feed into his mind, creating a psyche. And if you have to understand one sin with the fairies of Melanie Klein, is that it's about the inner world, the inner experience of subjectivity at its most fundamental core root level, right? So... Here we're really going to talk about the baby and the experience of the baby. Knowing that basically, um, even if we were all babies at some point, no one remembers it. So all of this is a construct, but it's such a useful construct. So the first part is going to be basically focused on hate, greed and possessiveness. And also aggression, obviously. It's going to be a very good introduction, as Joanne Riviere is going to fundamentally state um, very important things. At the very start of life, the infant has no way of coping with the hatred. The hatred is so intense, so massive, because basically it's so displeasurable that the infant is going to use a whole bunch of mechanisms to prevent that feeling of emerging within itself. So it's going to use what what is called projection, meaning that everything that's negative is going to be thrown out on the outside world, be it on caregivers or on other children. Basically, the child separates himself from the bad, and that's something that's very important and interesting. And it's going to also be things like rejection. The child's going to reject certain elements because he feels that they're bad, or even that if they're good, he might be envious. And translating that envy and to prevent himself from feeling envy, he's going to reject it. So there's a whole bunch of fairies that are very interesting. And you might think, yeah, okay, that's for the infant. But for them, it's going to be very important because what happens in infantile psychic life has ramifications into uh, adult behavior. And they're very, very good at explaining the processes that are going to go into both. Like, for example, for Joanne Rivière, this whole sense of projection also comes in into adult life. When, for example, people see others as fundamentally evil, uh, having black and white thinking, um, seeing others as wanting to hurt them. For, th for her, for Joanne Rivière, even if there is an outside world and a reality, a social reality, it harkens back to those first lived experiences of the infant, which the infant has to throw them out. And this is what happens with the adult. When it becomes untenable for the adult, the adult throws them out and basically tries to not look back or tries to 
put all the hatred, the hate on an external object because it's much, much, much easier than having to um, assemble both good and bad within our own psyche. That's how it works. Basically, our psyche is not mature enough at the beginning of life to integrate both. And of course, during development, normally, um, when things go well, be it because of a loving family or even sometimes uh, for client constitutional reasons, meaning that there is something at the base of the mind of the child that's well built or well built enough to be able to do an integration of both parts. Or basically, in the best case scenarios, there is an ambivalence that starts to come forward, meaning that one can handle both. But in certain cases, adults are not able to have that because they haven't been able to, or to build it or they've been constitutionally um, fra too fragile to be able to build. So there remains a dividedness in the mind. And that dividedness translates into acts of aggression, of course, in a way to try and destroy the bad within within oneself by projecting it and then destroying it in real life. The problem is that it never fundamentally works and hatred always needs a new object, so it's a never-ending cycle. They also talk very interestingly enough about jealousy and how people can feel very jealous. And you, they might, you might think that they will go for an Oedipal explanation of like it's because people are afraid of a father figure or a mother figure, but the very interesting point with that point of view of an internal world is that it's not necessarily the outside object that's, how can I say, evil and bad. For them, it's a defense because the person that feels jealous might feel not good enough for the person that they're afraid to lose the love of. So basically, they're so afraid of the inability to keep love, to be worthy of love, that they're going to think that the other one can only cheat or disrespect them because it's projection because they don't want to feel valueless so they think that the other one sees them as valueless so it's very interesting and i had a really good time reading the book the book is fundamentally important and i think it's a complete um, must read for for anyone interested but there's also this very interesting thing of how aggression also comes with a price it comes with the price of hurting relationships because basically um infant baby is going to realize that when he projects all of that, when he evacuates all of that onto an object, he's hurting the object he has in front of him. And that hurt is going to create a feeling of guilt, a guilt that's going to be deep and profound. But it's also going to push baby to try and fix, reparate in a way. And this is where Melanie Klein comes in into full force. Is that basically, baby is going to start growing capacities for love, for care, because of the aggression. The aggression is like a first step that, if it's well negotiated, can bring a whole range of good stuff, meaning care, compassion, um, love, um, camaraderie, um, tenderness, and so on and so forth. So we can see aggression as a first step. Unfortunately, it's a step that not everyone can go beyond. And that's what Joanne Rivière tries to point out. And the, she points out also that there is a greed within every one of us, a greed to possess the object because of all the good qualities that we see also in them and that we hate because if they're in them, they're not in us. So therefore we want to grab it and put it inside of us. And that also harkens back to how baby, in a way, uh, desires a feeding breast because that's another big sin in Klein and fairy days breasts are like fundamental a fundamental force right they're the first object and the one that greets us in the world and starts the new new and good first relationship and it's something that just feeds the baby and the baby is happy he feels the experience is good and he wants a breast to always feed him good stuff but there is that idea with it with an attack that the breast might go bad, wrong, or even abandoning. And that idea is fundamentally disruptive for the baby. So the baby kind of projects all of his aggression onto the breast, and then the, there's a fear that the breast might turn bad. Fortunately enough for baby, often the breast, and by extension the mother, 
can integrate all of that badness and send in also a limitation, but also a form of love. So therefore it's transformed in a way. There's also a very interesting um, sub, like I would say subplot, but it doesn't really work like this, but sub set of ideas on how basically um, the relationship of men with breasts, with female breasts, is a reactivation of that. That men are looking for the breasts that they had as babies. And I find that very interesting. I, I like the idea, I'm not going to lie. It's a, it's a very good way of explaining why there's such a massive obsession with breasts on the part of male um, people. And what I find very interesting is that they also answer for females, because you might think heterosexual women don't necessarily have an attraction to breasts, but they were fed by breasts all the same as men. And that's because for Joanne Rivière, there's a displacement. Women are going to feel that the that the phallus of the man is going to basically be like a breast. It's going to be something that excretes something like a breast, and it's going to basically be something that they lack, therefore they're going to want it. And they're going to see also it as um, an extension of the mother's breast. Very interesting. And it kind of answers my theory um, of why men are attracted to breasts and why women are attracted to penises. It's a fairy that I've never openly like talked about, but it's something that I had. So it was very nice to see someone finally address it. Um, moving on, uh, there is that high idea that basically baby wants to possess mother, all the good sins of mother. And that's something that Man and Klein links also to how... Um, European civilizations have done with um, other countries like in Africa or in Asia that they've colonized and, and have acts of aggression in America also I forgot that and um, acts of aggression because basically it, will, it was like trying to dominate mother and that they were trying to be destructive and all of that hate just poured out also because they were exploring something new and they're trying to dominate it but what they were truly trying to dominate was themselves. So this is a very interesting point of view of Klein that basically all of the hatred comes from within. That it's less to do with the outside world and more to do with our inner core life and that we unfortunately externalize it when it's not been built solid enough and we externalize it and hurt others because we're trying to evacuate our own hatred and we think that the others are going to do the same to us therefore we have to prevent that movement from doing, from hurting them before they hurt us in a very simplistic way of speaking of the phenomena. And that's what makes it so, 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 in a way, terrible, is that basically people like that hurt before, before any movement, before the others even have the idea of hurting, they hurt them first. And I think that's very true, that in a way it's very paranoid as a way of seeing since people are going to hurt, therefore we have to protect ourselves by hurting them first. And I think it's something that unfortunately we can still see today with a lot of movements, political or social and so on and so forth, that in a way it's strike before being striked. Um, and I think it holds a lot of water if we are to understand it as a fair of baby of being destroyed and it's a destruction that he himself has it, he's called, that he's basically unable to integrate. Therefore it's always someone else is gonna be at fault for the destructiveness when it's him experiencing the destructiveness. And that is fundamental. But when good things happen, the baby can integrate that goodness, that wellness, that happiness is gonna be part of baby and baby's gonna be able to have good and bad but it's going to be able to also, uh, if sins go really well, to be able, when sins go to hell, to be able to think about all the good moments, happy moments he had with his family, with good people, with people who brought him love, care, affection. And he's going to be able to use them to fight off all the negative elements of his life, both internal, of course, but also external. Like if there's a loss, he might be sad, he might feel guilty, but when that loss comes to be digested, he can then 
use the image of the loved one that's been that's passed away to realize, to re relive the good memories and to be able to face the issues of life itself so i found it to be a very rich text like there's so many ideas i've just like lost upon there's also a very very interesting uh critique of Joanne Riviere towards men of power, uh, which I found interesting and generally insightful. That basically they not they don't have or try and gain power because they love. They love power because they want to express their hatred, and that there's been no a ability for love. That even this first of power is a sign of lack of love. Because they wanted to dominate others and destroy them. Because they are unable to deal with their own destructivity. And that's also something you should um, keep in mind. Is it for Klein and for Kleinians. The main focal is our inner destructiveness. And our inner love for others. And it's two elements that are in constant struggle. In constant fighting. It's constant push against push. Aggression is met is meeting with love and they're fighting it out and when it ha when everything goes well we are able to express gratitude love care and so many other positive emotions and when it goes bad we seek power we project we reject we despise others we want them to die because we are unable to integrate our bad elements and i think that's exactly what ha happens with people that are unable to integrate their bad feelings and see themselves as complex humans. They see themselves as a caricature of good and they throw out the bad on others and it's always a fault of others. And it becomes, in a way, pathological, not necessarily in terms of like mental illness, but it becomes a sick, splitted way of seeing the world that's unable to understand complexity. And that's why I liked it so much. It's because Kleinians, for all of the defects that people tend to assume about them, they never forget the complexity of the human mind, that we are both binded by love, hate, and our desire to reparate after the sins we've broken and we try to fix them. And that's wonderful. And if you're ever interested in anything that I say, I would recommend it, it um regardless of any critique that one might make, because it's so good and it's well written and it's perfect for the layman. And uh, as I said at the start of the video, a great introduction. Introduction. Of course, that's very good you know, to introduce the good sense, like this book. But it's also a good introduction to Melanie Klein and her fairies. So I hope you like this video. If you have any questions or anything you'd like to ask or want to discuss, feel free to leave a comment. I will see you in the next one.